Well, there are plenty of things to do for the kids at Stampede here on Kids Day, but for those young at heart, I think we found the tonic, literally, in the form of Jack Daniels, Master Distiller Jeff joining us here on the show now. Uh, Jeff, first off, welcome. Thank you very much for having me today. It's great to be here. I want to get into the backstory of you first and foremost. How is it that you came from wherever you came from to getting <laughs> arguably one of the best jobs in the world? You know, I would argue that it probably is. It's very coveted, especially in the state of Tennessee. You know, I'm a native Tennessean, and I think Jack Daniels is probably the best known product that comes from my home state. Uh, so growing up there, I was a huge fan of Jack Daniels. We have a word of mouth fan club that exists for Jack Daniels called the Tennessee Squires Association. So, you know, I was part of a fan club of the brand, but they, they needed a quality control manager back in 2001. And I was lucky enough, I had, I had worked in a related uh, type of industry for another company, but I was able to become the quality control manager there. Uh, I served in that capacity for about seven years, overseeing all the, the quality of the whiskey that we make in Lynchburg. Uh, I was working under the previous master distiller who had worked for the company for about 40 years. Uh, had served as master distiller for 20 of those and he said Jeff you know I think you're the right guy to replace me so I was just lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time so after seven years of working at the distillery I became only the seventh uh, master distiller in the history of Jack Daniels and that's over a 153 year history uh, of the brand it's a time span that there have been 28 US presidents and 12 popes uh, but there have been only seven whiskey makers at Jack Daniels so I often tell people that I feel like I'm like four times better than the president and almost twice as good as the pope uh, just by being the master distiller at Jack Daniels and obviously you're now royalty, uh, frankly. I mean, everybody's looking around going, wow, all right, we've got some fun here. We uh, do. You've obviously been around the world. What one spot sticks out more than any where you sat there and went, I can't believe I'm here right now. You know, I would tell you this, uh, of all the places that I've gone, the one that I think I've most enjoyed it, I, you know, it, it sounds like I'm kind of catering to you, but I love the Stampede. Um, I came here for the first time about 10 years ago and I came by myself and I immediately called my wife and I said, you know, if they ever invite me back to the Stampede, I want you to come with me because I think you're really going to enjoy it here. I feel like I'm somewhat at home even though I'm away, um, but the weather was beautiful. The people were so friendly. I, I had a chance to, to go out into the Canadian Rockies and I'm like, I think I could live here. Uh, so this, this is literally my fourth time to visit the Stampede in about a 10 year period. And this year I was fortunate enough not just to bring my wife along, but also my son and daughter. So this is their first time here. They've had a blast. They love to chuck wagon races, the fireworks show, uh, the big grandstand show, every bit of it has been uh, just magical for them. And you allowed them a little excursion <laughs> out to the mountains as well today, so I they, I'm sure they've got a few stories for you. Absolutely. I, I'm kind of following the credit card swiping uh, <laughs> that my wife is doing, so I know that they're in Banff right now, <laughs> and, uh, and I told her I'd definitely go out there and enjoy it. I'm going to try to join them later this week and go out into the Rockies with them, so make some, make some memories as a family and then head home by the end of the weekend. Sounds fantastic. Speaking of swiping credit cards, I'm sure a few people, <laughs> after hearing about this, seeing it on Facebook as well, they're going to be going, I need to go to the store and grab myself some uh, Jack Daniels. It's got three different products here, and I wanted to just give us a little bit of a rundown as to what each three represent. Sure. You know, I think when most people think about Jack Daniels, they envision this square bottle that has a black and white label on it. It is the number one selling whiskey on the planet, and we're proud that every drop of it is made in a small town south of Nashville called Lynchburg. Uh, I'm working with a group of people that many of them have learned how to make whiskey from their parents and grandparents, so there's a generational pride in being associated with Jack Daniels, and, and I certainly feel it. I'm, I'm a first-generation employee myself. Uh, but I just sense that there's a, a pride and, and, and people give a lot of their, their self uh, into, into making the product and into flavoring it. But the old number seven black label brand today, number one selling whiskey on the planet. Um, and I think it's, you know, for a lot of people it kind of, it brings up a lot of imagery, rock and roll and, and country music, maybe rodeo and things. But I think if you just kind of strip the label away from it and just assess it for what it is, it's a beautiful whiskey. It's very balanced, uh, sweet and oak. It has a very unique grain bill. Uh, the charcoal mellowing process that we do as a Tennessee whiskey provides a level of smoothness that you don't necessarily see in some Kentucky bourbon type products. Even though I, I would tell you, I'd be the first to tell you I love Kentucky bourbons as well. Um, and I sample around uh, Jack Daniels and always kind of want to know what's going on. But I, I was first and foremost a fan of Jack Daniels. I uh, love the, the sweet to oaky range that it provides. So, you know, when you taste our old number seven black label, that's for sure what you're going to get. Um, the second expression of what we're showing here today is actually our first new grain bill since Prohibition, and it's a, a Tennessee rye. 
Um, you know, normally in our grain bill, we're only 8% rye or 80% corn, but we decided to do sort of an inverse of character. And we went with 70% rye and only 18% corn, which kind of elevates the spice uh, because rye is a much more spicy grain, corn being sweet. So you diminish the sweet and you elevate the spice. Uh, and, and ryes right now are very popular, especially in cocktail making mm -hmm. in America. So rye whiskey is the fastest growing form of American whiskey. And we hadn't made one, at least in the modern era. So it was a lot of fun as a master distiller to work with the expertise and, and all the people that I have there in Lynchburg to create our first one. Um, I always tell people that, you know, when you go from black label to rye, if you like the rye, it might be because there's even more of a, of a flavor of Canada in it because our rye comes from here. Uh, so, you know, we're, you know, a nine times increase in the element of Canada uh, that comes out in Jack Daniels. You know, so that's the pepper and spice of grain. We also have our single barrel here. Uh, this was the first product that Jack Daniels that I was responsible for when I was quality control. Uh, so it's our old number seven recipe as far as grains go, uh, but it comes from the high, hot floors of our warehouse where you have the deepest soak lines and the highest angel share, so you get more barrel character. Uh, so if you, as you go from black label to rye to single barrel, you're going spicy on grain with rye, you're going spicy on barrel with a single barrel. So you're just kind of elevating the character and building on top of that. Uh, but, you know, today we actually have 10 products in the marketplace. Uh, when I became Master Distiller uh, 11 years ago, we only had three. So we've been very active over the last seven or eight years in coming out with new products. It's been a, it's been a fun time to be the Master Distiller, I can tell you that. And obviously that's part and parcel with the, the marketplace as a whole. If you're not expanding or if you're not looking at different options, you're falling behind. Oh, absolutely. You know, even for a brand that's been around as long as Jack Daniels, that I think it's known and trusted, you know, people will taste your product and say, hey, that's great, what's next? Mm -hmm. you know, that, so you, you need to always be thinking about kind of how you keep their attention because, you know, it's sort of like the, you know, attention deficit people that, you know, you're kind of standing there and all of a sudden it's like, hey, it's a squirrel, you know, and they're up and running after it. Uh, so, you know, but you know, you, but you don't want to uh, uh, say waste away your brand equity. So I'm not going to put out a product just for interest if I don't think it's a good product. So that we're going to be thoughtful about what we do, but clearly our portfolio is now at 10 products and we're not done. We'll have a, we'll have another flavor coming out in the fall. Uh, so we'll be doing an apple. Uh, but we're also working on a new grain bill, working on some new barrel technologies. Uh, we're doing these small lines of taster series for people who come to Lynchburg, and we certainly hope that uh, your listeners would consider doing that, coming to Nashville, listening to music, and making the trip down to Lynchburg. Sounds um, like a really tough set. Uh, I'm telling you, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. And that, you know, I think when you're in Calgary, when you come to Nashville, you'll feel like you're home, because I certainly do feel like I'm home here. You know, I'll be going over to Nashville North later today, and I feel like it's like kind of stepping back into Nashville every time I go over there, so I, I feel very much at home. Uh, but then I've met some people here this week who've told me that they've come to Nashville, they've come to Lynchburg, they've taken the distillery tour, how much fun they had, how friendly the people were, and I'm like, well, I feel the same way about you guys uh, right. here, that's for sure. That is fantastic. Well, again, I know you guys have been around yeah. uh, the entire grounds for the entirety of the 10 days, so glad to have you here, and, and welcome back to our city, and hope to see you again soon. All right, thank you very much. This one will be more of our old, this is our same whiskey as here. This has gone to the top floor of a warehouse, gone deeper into the barrel, has a higher angel share, so it's gonna be darker, it's gonna have more barrel character. And we also do it, as it says here, it's a, it's a single barrel. Yep. Each single barrel produces about 250 bottles. Okay. Um, and every time the barrel changes, so does the character of the product slightly. Right. Each barrel has unique properties of toast and char. Uh, we make all of our barrels so for sale. Each one will be a little bit, uh, each one a be little a little bit different. Bit different. Yeah, yeah. But, but they'll, in general, they're gonna be creamier, they're gonna have a, a little bit a heavier mouth feel, uh, and they're gonna have more finish on them. So right. we're, we're black label didn't favor any part of the tongue. This one will probably have a longer finish on it, okay. and it's gonna feel like it clings in the mouth and coats right. a little bit more. Well, cheers to yeah, that. Cheers, <laughs> absolutely. This is the good stuff. I really like single barrel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the creamier, yeah, yeah, creamier sure. mouthfeel, a sure. little bit more of an expression mm -hmm. here in the back of the throat kind of lingers there, but not, not obnoxious. Yeah, yeah. So. Where is